over to our three main defense calls for the week. We are starting with the Seattle Seahawks versus Arizona. Arizona's 14th versus defense this year, but Seattle, I, I just like this defense overall. They're the seventh best defense on the year, and they're only 49% rosters. Tricky because Arizona has been a fighter in every game, but this one should go Seattle's way. They've been a top seven defense this far this season, despite having a bye week already, but the production mostly came from two big weeks at Detroit and the Giants. I will admit that the other weeks were letdowns, but they fared well versus Cincinnati last week, and they should build on it. The last two defenses versus Arizona ended up as a defense four and the defense seven on the week, and the Seahawks shouldn't be viewed as a lesser opposition than the Bengals and Rams from a defensive standpoint. So despite a couple of the flags we have here, I'm cool rolling out the Seattle Seahawks as a priority add. Next, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Atlanta Falcons. Boy, do we love betting at Desmond Mitter. They are 27th here against defenses. Tampa Bay is only 27% rostered. They are the defense 16 on this season. The Bucs have realistically been a top 12 defense thus far, but just like the last time we discussed, they have had a bye week already. So they're more of a low-key call here. Three of their five games have been top six, with the other two being serviceable, but not really costing you here. And I, I do like that for my defense because it offers some bit of a floor. The Falcons ended a run of horrible outputs from the Commanders, and hopefully for us, they'll give us a Tampa Bay bounce back. Now, the Falcons are a much lesser team on the road. Let's hope Ritter does his thing in this one versus the 27th worst opponent versus defenses. Our last main call here for defense is the Las Vegas Raiders at Chicago. We had the Raiders last week, and we were sticking with them despite being the 30th defense on the or the 29th defense on the year. They face the 30th opponent to defenses, and they're only 37% roster, so they're still out there for you. The Raiders are coming off two top 12 matchups in a row since three favorable in their next four. Sorry, not since, but they have three favorable matchups in their next four. They're at Chicago. This week, then it's a tough one versus Detroit. We may have to look away, but if you can afford to hold on here, they have the Giants and then the Jets at home. Those ones, Raiders expect them to come back onto the show for weeks nine and weeks 10. It's hard to miss the Minnesota Vikings 21 point uh, performance last week here from a defense seven higher than the second best option against the Bears. The Bears with no fields. Any team against them is here is a must play. The Bears have 25 sacks, seven interceptions, four fumbles, and four touchdowns against them through six games. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting the Raiders. I'm keeping the Raiders in my lineup in the leagues where I picked them up last week. I feel good about it. This should be the get right spot here for the Raiders, this stretch of the season for them. All right. Now, I said we had a repeat with Brett Mayer, and every week we tend to have at least one or two repeats. I mean, the Raiders were a repeat as well. I try to mix things up, but in the weeks where we have these, I try to give you a little extra bonus. Last week, I didn't feel as great about calls. I didn't give you those bonuses, but I got two back here for you this week, and we are going to go with the Washington Commanders and Dustin Hopkins if you're in a pinch. Now, if you watched our show that comes out on Tuesday mornings, our transactional tidbits episode where we get ahead of the waiver wire calls, we give you a couple of kickers and defenses every single one in that. A couple of teams like the Cleveland Browns, who I think are very solid play this week. We're below our mark, but after waivers, they are absolutely not. So if you want to get ahead of them, go watch that. And if you did watch that, you know I said the Washington Commanders are a landmine team here. So why do I have them here as the in a pinch play? Well, just for that, if you're short on options, we got to play the matchup. Uh, I really hate it if they burn you. It's on you here. But we got the 32nd ranked team against defenses. The commanders are only 32% rostered. They are the 20th defense on the season. They are coming off a solid week. Now the Giants, they've allowed 33 sacks, six interceptions, two fumbles, and three touchdowns through six weeks. Uh, having allowed 30 plus points to opponents in four straight weeks before the Falcons last week, I can't really fully trust them. And if you do stream the commanders against the Giants and this is their bounce back week, it's on you. Uh, I'm content missing out just by being good matchup on paper. But that being said, they are the call here because it is the best matchup on paper with no other options. I'll give them a go. Uh, yeah, I, I will note that the Dolphins and the Bills had OK weeks versus the Giants. But their true garbage did come in that first month. You can do a lot worse, I suppose, than the Washington Commanders here. A lot of you guys might be in a pinch. The options I mentioned might have gone on waivers. And here we are. I think you can go there. We're just hold, we're holding our breath. We are hoping for the best. 